In this video, we'll look at calculating confidence intervals for the mean using spreadsheets. Now there's different ways that this could happen. So we'll try to keep this organized. Later we'll learn how to calculate confidence intervals for the proportion. So we want to specify this is for the mean. And one way to do this is when the uh, population standard deviation is known. And these are sometimes called Z intervals. So you could be given the sample statistics and that's how it's in problem 8.2 and when you're given that you're given the uh, sample mean and the uh, sample size um, we are given the population standard deviation and we are given the confidence level So let's go ahead and put those numbers in. For this problem, the sample mean is given to be 36. Sample size is 28. Population standard deviation is 6. And the confidence level is 90%, so we'll put in 0.9. And one thing we need to calculate is the uh, critical value. And this is calculated from the confidence level. You want to think of the normal curve where the confidence level represents the area in the middle. Uh, remember the total area is 1, so if we were to subtract the confidence level from 1, we would get the area of the two tails. Uh, to get the area of one tail, we would then divide by 2, since there's two and they're the same size. So uh, for instance, 90% taken away from 1 gives us 10%, divided by 2 gives us 5%. So that's the area in the uh, left tail, 5%, and uh, that procedure in general will find you the area in the left tail for any confidence level. And if you tell Excel the area to the left, it'll tell you where that marker is. So what we want to do is use the norm inverse command. And we're going to do 1 minus the confidence level in parentheses. And then that's the area of the two tails. Dividing by 2 gives us the area of the one tail and then just put in 0 and 1 and this will give us the uh, marker on the left. Now and this is always going to come up negative and we usually want the positive version so we'll put a negative sign in front and that will give us our critical value. Right. And those values are pretty common so you can look them up but uh, it's nice to be able to have that calculated from any confidence level in case you get a weird one like 97 percent or 93 percent. All right, from here we can calculate the margin of error. And the margin of error just takes that critical value and multiplies it by the standard deviation of the sampling distribution, which is the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. Remember that formula uh, for adjusting the standard deviation from the last chapter. And, uh, and you remember the definition of a z-score is the number of standard deviations from the mean. Uh, then you put that together and this tells you that uh, distance for the uh, sample mean. All right, so we get the margin of error and we're now ready to do the uh, confidence interval. And there's a lower bound and an upper bound. And the lower bound is the sample mean minus the margin of error. And the upper bound is the sample mean plus the margin of error. And that's the confidence interval. And then you can put units on there if you want. So minutes. Minutes, of course, those things will change. All right, now we could be given the actual sample data. In this case, we want to take advantage of all this work we've done. So let's copy that and paste it below. And then let's just put our sample data over here. 
and let's look at a problem where we have sample data such as this one. You would type the data in one by one and so on. And the sample mean would then be calculated from that sample data. So here we use a calculation for sample mean and use the average function, which is just going to find the mean. Now you can just go down and include these numbers, um, but a clever thing to do is to go down really far, and that way if the sample size changes, you can just put the data in and it'll automatically include those extra numbers. Remember, it doesn't include blank spaces in these calculations. So I'm going to hit page down a few times. And that'll cover us for a sample size of up to 100. So you can see the finished command goes down to G124. And those blank spaces are omitted. Uh, sample size can be given or calculated pretty easy, but you can be fancy and use the count command. And the same idea, let's page down a few times. So go down to 115. Now, if I put in another number here, 1.53, 0 0.68, you can see those sample means and sample sizes automatically adjusting. Uh, the population standard deviation still has to be put in. That's given to you. And then the confidence level still has to be put in. But everything else stays the same. So uh, we're 93% confident that the SAR for cell phones, the mean SAR for cell phones, is between 0 0.906 and 1.26. So in order to reuse this, I find it helpful to label what things you can change and what things you can't. So we'll mark these off as uh, inputs, and then these are calculations, so that we don't mess with those. Uh, here, those are inputs, and the sample data is inputs. Uh, but these are calculations now. And if you didn't use a calculation for sample size, that's fine. You can just leave that as an input. So you know to change the orange background ones, um, but don't change the uh, ones with the gray background. And then you can even put that up here. <laughs> so you don't forget. All right, you're set to do any Z intervals you want. Um, now we're going to make some slight changes and do some T intervals. And this is the case when the population standard deviation is unknown. And these are called t intervals. And you can have the same two situations, though the top case seems to be a little more unlikely in this book. But here's an example where we have some sample data. So I'm going to start putting this in. The sample mean is fine, the sample size is fine. The population standard deviation is now a sample standard deviation, and we want to actually calculate that. So we'll replace that with a formula, uh, the STDEV formula, and then go ahead and select your sample data. So I'm going to do page down a few times, close the parentheses and hit enter, and you can see the formula. And that's now a calculation there. So you don't want to mess with that. The confidence level is given in 0.95 in this problem. Now the critical value is not a z value anymore. We're using the t distribution here. So we need to use the t inverse command. And the probability is 1 minus the confidence level. Uh, it automatically knows to divide by 2. It's a two-tailed distribution. So we can just put that in. And then the degrees of freedom is the sample size minus 1. Now we can check. We know here on the right that the t value should be 2.14. And there it is, 2.14.
the margin of error will automatically be adjusted because that just uses the new critical value and the sample standard deviation. So we have the correct confidence interval down there, 7.3 to 9.15. Now what we want to change up here, the critical value formula should be changed. So change that one up there, copy and paste. And this should be a sample standard deviation. Um, but again, just put the data in there if you have these summary statistics. All right, one more thing to do, and that would be the case of finding the sample size. And in those situations, which we have one right here, 8.7, we are given the uh, population standard deviation. And we are given the margin of error that we want. It's desired margin of error. And we are given the confidence level. So let's put those in. For this problem, population standard deviation is 3. Margin of error is 1, because it says that we want the sample mean to be within 1 inch of the population mean. So that's the margin of error. And the confidence level is 95%, so 0.95. All right. Uh, we again want to get a critical value. And we use the same formula as we did before. Let's see if we can just copy that over. From the z-interval page, right? Use the one. So there's my critical value. And then we need the uh, formula. So the uh, sample size, and uh, we're going to use the round up font command that will round it up to a whole number. And we want to then put in the critical value times the standard deviation divided by the margin of error, all, right, all in parentheses, and then we're going to square it. And that's the number that would give us the sample size as a decimal. But we want to round up, so we'll put comma zero. This has to have it rounded up with zero digits. So it'll round up to the nearest whole number. And, uh, and we'll put individuals. Usually this is a number of people, like a survey, but it, it could be uh, non-human individuals. And so that's uh, going to be the calculation there. And then these are the inputs. All right, and that's how to do everything for the first two sections with